Alexander Armstrong and a very warm welcome to Pointless, the quiz show where the lowest scorers are the biggest winners. Let's meet today's players. So first we welcome Rick and Shirley, you're our first pair on today's show. Uh, now where are you from? We're both from Scotland at the moment. Right, but you've lived all over the place, have you? Uh -huh. yeah. Particularly Rick. Where have, you, where have you lived, Rick? Um, South Africa for 21 years. That's not a South African accent, <laughs> nor indeed a, a Scottish accent. Well, Geordie accent originally. So how did you, how did you and Shirley meet? Um, we actually met on the net two and a half years ago. Uh, on the net? Yes, on but <laughs> not the internet, not on one of those dodgy chat lines, on the tennis what, court What net. a shame, that's really disappointing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was on the tennis court net and we played tennis together in the same club um, for two and a half years now. So what do you do for a living, Shirley? At the moment I work as an optical assistant in one of the major retailers. Very good indeed. Rick, how about you? I'm semi-retired now um, because I've been hairdressing for 36 years now. I'm 51. <laughs> <laughs> 51. Come on. Are these South African years? No, 51 years, yes. And, really? Uh, yes, definitely. Just the good living over there was good for, good for me. That's only 27 years older than you. I know. <laughs> it's absurd, isn't it? Wow. Wow. Amazing. Come back on the show when you're 100. OK, that's a deal. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Well, welcome. Great to have you, you here. And thanks um, for having us. A great pleasure. Now, we then welcome Stuart and Jono. Now, how do you two know each other? Uh, when I was about 15, 16, I joined the sixth form where I was in a cafe having a nice little breakfast and I met Stu. And I, mean, I was in a band, in an indie rock band, and we were looking for a guitarist. Heard Stu was playing guitar, so we got him along to a rehearsal. Obviously impressed. And he fitted right in? He fitted in, yeah. And, and so, so how many people in the band? Four. Four, four piece, indie four piece? Indie four piece. What, what are you called? The Great Gatsby. The Great Gatsby? Like the book, we know. Like the book? Like the book. But, um, yeah, it's going really well. And he's now playing drums for us. So on a song like Charlie, for example, you're... You're, <laughs> you're drumming on that. You don't do any... There's no, no guitar on that. that. That fantastic rhythm guitar on there, that's... Uh, that'll, that's be, that'll be John. That'll be John. And he does fantastic. a little bit of singing in there, so... Hang on, you're meant to be really impressed that I know their back catalogue. <laughs> they they seem they were utterly indifferent. To yeah, they look like they assume everyone. Yeah, yeah they Charlie, assume yeah. everyone. Yeah, Charlie. <laughs> That's what we <laughs> What's your whistle your favourite of their numbers? <laughs> oh. <laughs> How, what, what do you want? Um, yet to return, what do you want? That one or...? Yeah, um, give it a go. Well, it's got the fab... Who can forget that, that captivating <laughs> opening riff? <laughs> 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 That's you, isn't it? There we go. Yeah, <laughs> Stuart. <laughs> that. Um, well, listen, very, very, very best of luck on the show. It's great to have you here. And next, we welcome back Tom and Hazel. You were on the show last time. Everyone gets two chances to reach our final. This is your second chance. Remind us how you did. We got to the head-to-head. -head. We were quietly confident because we scored eight points, but uh, unfortunately, we were beaten. You did very well. We did. Very well. Minnesota? Yes. Last time when you finished, what were you thinking? Next time, I would really love... Mm -mm, to come up. Questions that I know the answers Great. to would that be is... okay. brilliant. I'm Fabulous. afraid I've got yes. none of those today, Hazel, oh. sorry. <laughs> yeah. Notice uh, Tom's sporting a few new tattoos <laughs> today with answers uh, with the uh, presidents of the United States and <laughs> countries United beginning States with the w. the problem last time round. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very, very good. Well, listen, it's great having you on the show and uh, we'll look forward to hearing more from you later. And finally, we have got Scott and Marcus. How do you two know each other? Uh, well, my girlfriend's friends with uh, Scott's wife and Scott sings and he was in a club where we all went together. Uh, so that's how I first got to know him. Very good. What do you sing, Scott? Um, a lot of old soul and Motown sort of stuff, so... Any, any indie stuff? Uh, unfortunately not, no. It's oh. not my genre. So, then, um, Scott, what categories would be brilliant for you this afternoon? Uh, film. Film? Film and music. Film and music. How about you, Marcus? Definitely films. I've watched the same film 200 times. Which one's that? Silence of the Lambs. What? Right, so OK. I'm hoping something about Silence of the Lambs comes up. <laughs> <laughs> so. What particularly about the Silence of the Lambs? Well, is I don't know, but I'm always doing an impression to my mum 
when the lights are off when they come in, so she gets quite scared, so... <laughs> what a surprise! <laughs> what's, uh, what's your favourite line from it? A census taker once tried to test me. I ate his liver with some fava beans and a nice Chianti. Wow. I have got to say, that is a very, very good Jodie Foster impression. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we'll be finding out more about all of you throughout the show. There's only one person left for me to introduce. When most people's knowledge well runs dry, he still has plenty to drink. In fact, you always have plenty to drink. He's my pointless <laughs> friend. He's Richard. Hiya. Hello. Hello there. Well, hello there. How are you? Yeah, I'm very well. How are you? I, I couldn't be better. Should be a good show. You've only got one returning pair today, but that's Tom and Hazel, and they were very, very strong last time. Very strong all the way through. It was a, very, it was a tough head-to-head, -head, wasn't it? Very and tough. And they did well, so I suspect they may be very, very hard to beat, everyone. No film questions, though, I'm afraid to say. There's a music question, depending on your definition of music. Very good. Well, thanks very much, Richard. Now, we put all our questions to 100 people before the show, but this is pointless, so we are after the obscure answers they didn't get. To stay in the game with a chance to win our jackpot, all our players need to do is score as few points as they possibly can. What everyone's trying to do, of course, is find a pointless answer. That's an answer that none of our 100 people gave. And each time that happens, we will add £250 to the jackpot. Now, nobody won the jackpot last time, so we add another £1,000 to that. So today's jackpot starts off at £2,250. <laughs> Right, let's play Pointless. OK, so in the first round, each of you must give me one answer and you cannot confer with your partner. Whichever team has the highest score at the end of the round will be eliminated. OK, our first category this afternoon is... Birds. Birds. Jono, you're really pleased with that. <laughs> OK, well, can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, let's find out what the question is. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many birds of prey as they could. Richard. Yeah, all the correct answers in this round are birds that are classified as birds of prey. The incorrect answers on the boards uh, will not be birds at all. Uh, obviously, the more obscure ones will score you a few points. Very good. Well, Richard gave you the good news there. He said on the boards. Uh, Rick and Shirley, you all drew lots before the show, and this afternoon you get to go first. In this round, as I was saying, we're going to give you a choice of seven possible answers on the board in each pass. Your first set of seven answers reads like this. Merlin, Goshawk, Battler, Buzzard, Bald Eagle, Dornia, Towie. I'll read those one more time. Merlin, Goshawk, Battler, Buzzard, Bald Eagle, Dornia, Towie. There we are. Now, I can tell you that at least one of those answers is pointless, but be very careful because at least one of those answers is incorrect. Pick one of those incorrect ones and you will score the maximum of 100 points. Now then, Shirley, you're the first to dip into this round. I will go for goshawk. A goshawk. You're quite confident of that. Uh-huh. OK, goshawk is what you're saying. Is it a bird of prey? Let's see. If it's right, if it is, let's see how many people said it. It's right! Brilliant. Didn't she do well, Rick? Very good. Goshawk scores you three, Shirley. Richard. Yeah, well done, Shirley. Uh, good start to the show. The Gossel. There's about 400 breeding pairs in the UK. They've got very bright red eyes and a, a big white eyebrow. The Gosshawk. Very good. Thanks, Richard. Now then, Jono. Hello. You love this subject, don't you? Love it. An too. ornithologist, man and boy. Love it. <sighs> Although I do have birds come into my garden, but it's usually the squirrels that take the uh, food. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jono. I think there's one there I obviously know. Um, and there's quite a few I don't know, but there's one I think I've heard of, but I'm not 100% sure, but I'm going to go for it anyway. And that's Towie. Towie? Yeah, I think that Towie. could be... Could be. Could be. Towie could be a brilliant answer. Let's find out. Towie, is it right? How many people said it? Towie. Oh. Oh. Oh, you did the right thing. I don't like birds. But it was just happened, just happened to be wrong. I'm afraid Towie is an incorrect answer, John, I'm afraid, which means you score the maximum of 100 points. 
Richard. Yeah, TOWIE is uh, it's, it's an acronym and, uh, and a popular name for the TV show The Only Way is Essex. TOWIE. <laughs> I'm That's afraid. And if you, if you had birds like that coming into your garden, you would, uh, you'd want the squirrels to square them away, I think. Maybe. Yeah. Them away. Okay. Towie. Towie. The only way is Essex. Bad luck, Jono. 100 points. <sighs> Stu will save me. I'm, I know he will. I'm sure he will. Tom, we come to you. Yeah. A man who knows his birds. N no. Um, I'm quite happy. I was going to say Towie, actually. That's quite good. <laughs> OK. Um, it's a bit safer now, so I'm going to have a go. I'm going to say buzzard. A bit safer, buzzard. There we are. Well, I tell you what, you're removing the safety net of buzzard from the table. So tactically, that could be a good thing to do. Let's see if buzzard is right. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. Thirty-three. Not bad, Richard. Uh, yeah, good answer, but 33. It's the most common uh, bird of prey in the UK, the buzzard. Now then, Marcus, you're the last person to have this bird table. Oh, very good. Oh. Very good. <laughs> yeah, the best. the best till last. Come well, on. Halfway through. That's not bad, is it? Yeah, isn't it? Not bad really? for a work experience boy. <laughs> you're the last person to have this, this suite of birds, so uh, why not uh, talk us through the board? Uh, Merlin's a wizard, I think, so I'm not too sure about that one. Uh, bald Eagle's obviously one. Um, so do I play safe? There is at least one pointless answer. I'll go for Dornier, please. You're going to go for Dornier? Yes, please. Let's see if Dornier is right, and if it is, let's see how many people said Dornier. Good luck, Marcus. Bad luck, bad luck. Unfortunately, Dornier is incorrect, which means you score the maximum of 100 points. Richard. Yeah, unlucky, Marcus. It's a, it was a plane used by the Luftwaffe during World War II, the Dornier, <laughs> often known as the Flegender Bleistift, or, or the, as you know, ift. Pencil, flying pencil. Flying pencil. Very <laughs> good. How do you know that? Because I was just working it out. No, but I mean, how do you know the German for pencil? Did you not study German at, at pencil level? <laughs> <laughs> Did you not? When you did pencils at school, did you not learn the word in all the languages? You probably know the Latin for pencil, don't you? I, I don't, actually. No. No, me either. No. Uh, let's take a look at the rest of the board. Bald Eagle uh, absolutely is up there. Would have scored you 12 points as well. Wouldn't have been a bad one to go for. It's a national symbol of America, 12 there. Merlin is a, uh, is a bird of prey. Would have scored you four points, so not a bad answer. Well done if you got that at home. And Battleur. Battleur is, uh, is the pointless answer on the board, so congratulations if you got that one at home. Thank you very much, Richard. Well, we're halfway through the rounds. So let's take a look at those scores. Shirley and Rick, wow. In this very, very high scoring round, you are sitting fantastically pretty on three. Very good indeed. Then we come up to Tom and Hazel on 33. Sometimes that's a high score in this round. That's a, a, a safe and low score because Jono and Stuart and Marcus and Scott are on 100. So yes, Stuart and Scott, you have a tussle between you to see who will be staying and who will be leaving at the end of the round. OK, we're going to come back down the line. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? OK, we're going to put seven more answers on the board. We are looking for birds of prey, and here they are. We have got Sparrowhawk, Red Kite, Spinny, Secretary Bird, Lamagaya, Strelitzia, Owl. Sparrowhawk, Red Kite, Spinny, Secretary Bird, Lamagaya, Strelitzia, Owl. There we are. And again, I can tell you that at least one of those answers is pointless, but at least one of those answers is incorrect. So try and avoid those incorrect ones. Scott, 100 points you got from Marcus there. I don't know if it's an easy option, but I think I'm going to go for Red Kite. Red Kite. The Red Kite. Well, you are on 100. You are the high scorer, joint high scorers with Stuart and Johnny. So there's no red line for you. You just have to hope that Red Kite gets you as low as it possibly can. Let's see if it's right and if it is. Let's see how many people said red kite. It's correct. Very, very good indeed. That might be just what you needed, Scott and Marcus. Red kite scores you seven, takes your total up to 107. Richard. Yeah, well played, Scott. That puts all the pressure back on, uh, on Stuart and Jono. The red kites sort are of famously saved from extinction uh, in the UK, certainly now, now thriving. Now then, Hazel, you are on 33. 
That means if you want to avoid becoming the high scorers, you have to score 73 or less. Will it be enough to get you through to the next round? How are you on your birds of prey? Well, I thought not too bad, but... There's... And then you saw the board? Yeah, the first board was better for me. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm going to play it safe. And I'm going to say Sparrowhawk. Sparrowhawk. Yeah. All right, I think you can afford to do that. There's your red line, nice and high. Well, let's see if Sparrowhawk's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said Sparrowhawk. There we are. Well done, you're through. Down it goes, 23. Takes your total up to 56. Richard. Yeah, well played Hazel, mother and son, safely through to round two. Two good answers. There's over 40,000 breeding pairs of sparrowhawks in the UK. It's very, very common. Stuart. Yes. Now then, Scott and Marcus managed to claw a total of 107. You have to score six or less with this answer. Right. Uh, I think there's one that I kind of think might be, but obviously I don't think it's going to get six or under. So I think I'm going to have to risk it and uh, risk looking like the worst partnership in the history of Pointless, <laughs> but here we go. Um, I think I'm gonna go for Spinny. Spinny. Yeah. <clears throat> do, you to, do you want to make a noise, like what a Spinny might make? I don't think I will, no. Okay, no. fair enough, fair <laughs> enough. That's probably the, right, probably the right option. Okay, you're gonna go for Spinny. There it is, third one down. Well, be very, very best of luck with Spinny. Here's your red lines. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's quite low. <laughs> If Spinny gets you below that, you're through to the next round. Best of luck, Spinny. Oh, bad luck, I'm afraid. That's a wrong answer, which means you score the maximum of 100 points, taking your total up to an impressive 200. <laughs> Richard Spinny. I know, look, if you're going to lose, lose big. That's yeah, the way to do it. Uh, yeah, Carol Spinney is the name of the actor who plays Big Bird in Sesame Obviously. Street. <laughs> so, you know that? That is an unbeatable score, which means Rick and Shirley. In fact, you were already through after Scott and Marcus's score of 107, but you have a free, f free hand now, Rick. Okay. So why not see if you can eke out the pointless answer exactly. on that board? Talk I'll, us through the board, though. OK, I know an owl's an owl, which is easy, but something from South Af Africa's here, which is a strelitzia, which is a flower. So I know that's definitely not a bird, and I know a secretary bird is a bird, so I'm going to go for Lamagaya or Lamagaya. Lamagaya, okay, very good. Lamagaya, there it is. Three up from the bottom. Let's hope that is the pointless answer. Only one way to find out. Lamagaya, is it right? How many people said it? It's right. Well done, Rick. That's a pointless answer, so it adds £250 to today's jackpot, taking the total up to £2,500. It also scores you nothing, leaving your total at an impressively low three. Very well done. Richard? Yeah, very, very well played, Rick. He's 51, you know. Get out Get of out town. Uh, Lamagai, again, well done if you've got Lamagai at home. And Rick has taken us through most of the rest of the board, actually, but let's take a look. Uh, the Strelitzia, as you say, it's actually, it's, uh, it's called the bird of paradise. It's a, it's a plant. That would have been uh, an incorrect answer. Uh, owl, we know, obviously, but there was a, a fairly hefty 60 points there. And the secretary bird, uh, it is a bird of prey, actually, and was another pointless answer. So if you'd gone for that, it uh, would also have been pointless. So again, very well done if you said secretary bird at home. It's got the longest legs of any, uh, of any bird of prey, but a uh, very good shorthand. <laughs> Thanks, Richard. So at the end of round one, the losing pair with the highest score, I'm afraid, Stuart and Jono. We've had fun. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. Yeah, look, there, you, got, you get an R. Not every pair gets that. The great news is we get to see you again next time, which, uh, which is fabulous. And please, then, will you make sure you're through to the final at least? We will. At the very least. We will. Uh, brilliant. It's been brilliant having you on the show. Thanks Thank so much you. for playing. Great to Thank you. Thank you. But so for the remaining three pairs, it's now time for round two. Now, obviously, there's only room for two pairs in the head-to-head, -head, so one team is going to be leaving us at the end of this round. OK, our category for round two this afternoon is... Literature. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. And our round two question this afternoon concerns literary villains and their works of fiction. 
Uh, we're going to show you two lists of six literary villains. Uh, we asked 100 people in which work, which novel or play did these villains first appear. It can be the, the first novel they're in or first play they're in or the first, uh, if it's a series, the name of that series. The more obscure answer you give, the fewer points you'll score. If you give us an incorrect answer, you'll score 100 points and see how many of those 12 you can get at home. OK, so we are looking for literary villains and the works in which they appeared. And here is our first list. We have got Mrs Danvers, Big Brother, Miss Trunchbull, Bill Sykes, George Wickham, Milady de Winter. I'll read those one more time. And they are Mrs Danvers, Big Brother, Miss Trunchbull, Bill Sykes, George Wickham, Milady de Winter. So there is our list. As always, in Pointless, you are trying to find the one that the fewest of our 100 people knew. Now, Shirley, what are you thinking? Um... I'm going to go for one that I'm reasonably confident with, because uh, I think Rick is more the risk taker. Uh, I'm going to go for Mrs. Danvers, uh, who was in Daphne du Maurier's novel, Rebecca. Very good indeed. Mrs. Danvers, Rebecca, you are saying. Let's see if it's right, and if it is, let's see how many people knew that answer. Mrs. Danvers, Rebecca. Well done, it's right. Very good indeed, Shirley. Ten points. Ten points for Rebecca. Yeah, very well played, Shirley. Good start. Uh, published in 1938, Rebecca. Now, Tom. I have absolutely no idea on any of these. Um, I'm going to make a, there's something in the back of my head. I'm going to make a complete guess. I have a feeling Miss Trunchbull was the teacher in Matilda. So that's what I'm going to say. Miss Trunchbull, Matilda. You are saying, let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people knew that answer. That could be a brilliant answer, Tom. Yes, yes. very well oh, done. 53. It's a whole lot better than 100, though, Tom. Very good answer indeed, Miss Trunchbull Matilda. Uh, yeah, surprisingly well played, Tom, but quite a big score, 53. She's, she's the cruel headmistress in Matilda. Very good. Now then, good answer anyway, Tom. Scott, we come to you. Remember, we're looking for the literary works in which these villains first appeared. You are the last person to have this board, so talk us through the board and then pick your favourite. I can't really talk you through it because I haven't got a scooby about any of them, to be honest. There's only one that sticks out, and it was mainly because I've never read the story, but I was in the play at school. Um, Oliver Twist, Bill Sykes. Bill Sykes, Oliver Twist. OK, we have Bill Sykes, Oliver Twist. Let's see if that's right, and if it is, let's see how many people knew that answer. score at all for Bill Sykes, Oliver Twist. Richard. Surely one of, the, one of the greatest villains in British literature and just 31 points. I know. It's amazing. Uh, let's take a look through the rest of the board. Big Brother is from, uh, from 1984. Of course, that would have scored you 36 points. George Wickham. Pride and Prejudice. It, it is, is Pride and Prejudice. Pride and Prejudice. Yeah, it is Pride and Prejudice. A terrible scoundrel. He would have scored you 12 points. And the best answer on the board is uh, Milady de Winter. Any, any idea on that one? It's a tough round, this, isn't it? Low scores all round. It's uh, Three Musketeers. Three Musketeers, exactly Winter. right answer. Would have scored you six points. So very, very well done if you got that one. Very good. Thank you so much, Richard. OK, well, let's take a look at the scores. We are halfway through the round. Ten points again. Shirley and Rick looking very, very strong at this halfway point. Then we go up to Scott and Marcus on 31, Tom and Hazel 53. So, Hazel, yes, you've got a bit of a job to do, but I have absolute faith in you doing it. OK, we're going to come back down the line. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? OK, we're going to put more villains on the board, and here they are. We have got... Long John Silver, Iago, Shere Khan, Uriah Heep, Mr. Kurtz and Mrs. Coulter. Read those one more time. Long John Silver, Yago, Shere Khan, Uriah Heep, Mr. Kurtz and Mrs. Coulter. Now remember, we are looking for the works in which they first appear, and you are trying to find the one that the fewest of our 100 people knew. OK, now Marcus. Right, um, I'm not going to have a guess on one, so I'm going to play quite safe and go for Treasure Island, Long John Silver. Long John Silver, Treasure Island. OK, you want to score 21 or less to be sure of a place in the head's head. There's your red line. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said Treasure Island for Long John Silver. <laughs> 55. That scores you. 
Will it be enough, I wonder? That takes your total up to 86. Richard? Yeah, it's a, a pretty big score, actually, isn't it? So it's a good answer, though. Published in 1881 in serial form, then as a book in 1883. Remember, we're looking for the literary works in which these villains first appeared. So, Hazel, Marcus and Scott are now the high scorers on 86. If you can score 32 or less with your answer, you are through to the head-to-head. -head. I think you're going to do it. Not sure. There's only one on there that I'm absolutely positive about. There's one that I'm not certain about, and the rest I've no idea. So I'm going to take a chance. Uh, Uriah Heep, David Copperfield. Uriah Heep, David Copperfield. Here's your red line. Below that red line, through to the head-to-head. -head. Let's see if it's right, and if it is, let's see how many people said it. It's right! Very well done, Hazel. And you're through to the head-to-head. -head. Look at that. Brilliant. What a good oh, answer. Oh. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. I knew you had it in you, Hazel. That's brilliant. That scores you three, takes your total up to 56. Richard? Yeah, well played, Hazel. Good risk to take from David Copperfield. He's the, the scheming clerk, the very humble scheming clerk. Now then, Rick, the high scorers remain Marcus and Scott on 86. You are on 10. If you can score 75 or less with this answer, 75 or less, you are through to the next round. I think you might be able to score considerably less than that. Mm, I don't know. I'm not so sure, so I'm going to stay very safe with Shere Khan from the Jungle Book. Shere Khan, the Jungle Book. Yep. Well, here is your red line. As you'll see, it's nice and high up. Shere Khan ought to get you below that red line and should see you safely through to the head-to-head. -head. Good luck. Let's see if it's right. If it is, let's see how many people said Shere Khan, the Jungle Book. Mm -hmm. Well done, you're through. 49. But in... <laughs> 49 for Shekhan takes your total up to 59. Richard. Yeah, well done, Rick. Very sensible tactic, Shekhan, across the tiger in the jungle book. Let's take a look at the rest of the answers, though. Mrs. Coulter is the next highest scoring answer. Do you know Mrs. Coulter? It's from the uh, Philip Pullman. That's um, right, from the, his Dark, Dark Materials, Materials trilogy. That would have scored you 14 points, a very good answer. Uh, Iago is... Um, Othello. Othello, of course. That would have scored you 10 points, only 10 points. And the best answer on the board, very well done if you said Mr. Kurtz. Do you know Mr. Kurtz? Of course, it's Colonel Kurtz in Apocalypse Now, and that's based on Joseph Conrad's Heart of Darkness. So Heart of Darkness was the answer there by Joseph Conrad, but it scored one point. So very well done if you got that at home. Very well done indeed. OK, well, thanks, Richard. At the end of round two, the losing pair with the highest score, Scott and Marcus, I'm sorry to say. Scott, are you going to forgive him for Long John Silver? Yeah. Literature's not a, not a strong point for either of us, so... Well, we will see you again next time, when I hope we'll, you'll go further than the, than the second round. Um, but you've been great contestants. Thanks very much for playing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But for the remaining two pairs, things are going to get even more exciting now as we enter the head-to-head. -head. Very well done, Rick, Shirley, Tom, Hazel. You've made it through to the head-to-head. -head. Now, obviously, only one pair can make it through to the final and play for today's jackpot, which currently stands at £2,500. You're now going to go head-to-head -head on the best of three questions. For each question, each pair needs to give me just one answer, and you are now allowed to confer. All you have to do is come up with an answer that scores less than the other pair, and you will win that question. The first pair to get to the best of three will be playing for today's jackpot. Let's play Pointless. OK, here is your first question. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many Take That UK Top 40 singles with one-word titles as they could. Yeah, we're looking for any single released by Take That, or which has them as a featured artist, which has reached the UK Top 40 prior to April 2011, which has one word as a title. There are six names on the list. Six names on the list. OK, Rick and Shirley, you've played best throughout the show so far, so you get to go first. Have you come up with an answer? <laughs> Rick has. <laughs> Rick's got an answer. But I'm not sure, really. It's such a hard category. So we're just going to take a stab and say patience. Patience. Yeah. OK, patience. Tom and <laughs> Hazel. As you can see, I'm a massive <laughs> Take That fan. I was going to say, you are. <laughs> yeah, me too. We honestly don't know any. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just say a word. Baby. Baby. Yeah. 
No idea. <laughs> Rock on. <laughs> <laughs> patience <laughs> and baby. Okay, Rick and Shirley went for patience. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said patience. It's right. Fourteen. Fourteen for patience. Tom and Hazel have gone for <laughs> baby. Baby. <laughs> right, okay, well, let's see if baby's right. Oh, wouldn't that be brilliant if it were? <laughs> it's not going to be. <laughs> Might be. Let's see, baby. Did they release a single called Baby? Did it make it to the top 40? And will it beat patience on 14? <laughs> you a surprise. Gary, if you're watching, baby, good. <laughs> you're a brilliant seller, that one. Baby, bad luck uh, not to take that single. Um, alas. Uh, so after one question, Rick and Shirley are ahead, 1-0. Richard. We always say, don't we, when people don't know it at all, they make something up. Sooner or later, somebody will actually guess a right answer, and you very nearly did, because oh. babe <laughs> is a one word. <laughs> take that hit single. Wouldn't have won you the points, though. Oh. Wouldn't have won you the points. That's right, though. Let's take a look at all six answers. There's one very, very good answer here, which is Promises, which was their first ever top 40 single. Would have scored you one point. Very well done. If anyone got that at home. Uh, Shaw with four. Shine got 11, surprisingly low score. There's Patience on 14, Babe on 17, and Prey top of the pile there on 18. Very good. Thanks so much, Richard. Here is your second question. Tom and Hazel, you have to win this point to stay in the game. Here it comes. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many Australian state capitals as they could. Yeah, we're looking for any of the capitals of the six Australian states. Those are the uh, six original colonies. So we're not looking for the capitals of any of the territories, the so Northern Territories or the Australian Capital Territory. Just looking for the capitals of the six Australian states. OK, thank you, Richard. Tom and Hazel, you get to go first this time. Do you know any? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, go on. We're not entirely sure, but we're going to say Canberra. Canberra. OK, yeah. Tom and Hazel are saying Canberra. Adelaide. Yes. Yeah. OK. OK. We're going to say Adelaide. Adelaide. Yeah. We have Canberra. We have Adelaide. OK, Tom and Hazel went with Canberra. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said Canberra. You have to win this point to stay in the game. Oh! Bad luck. An incorrect answer there with Canberra. Rick and Shirley have gone with Adelaide. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said Adelaide. It's right. Very good. 32. Bad luck there, Tom and Hazel. Richard. Uh, yeah, well played, Rick and Shirley. Adelaide is the capital of South Australia, named after the, the wife of William IV. Uh, and Canberra is the capital of the Australian Capital Territory, Canberra, but not, uh, not one of the states. Let's take a look at all six of them, see how well he did at home. Best answer there is Hobart, which is the capital of, uh, of Tasmania. Uh, would have scored you 16 points. There's Brisbane and Adelaide on 32. Brisbane is the capital of Queensland. Perth, which is Western Australia, would have scored you 49 points. Melbourne, uh, which is Victoria, would have scored you 57. And Sydney, right at the top, 71, which is the, uh, the capital to the New South Wales. Very well done if you got all six. OK, well, at the end of that round, the losing pair, I'm afraid, Tom and Hazel. No, no points. Two very tough categories for you there. Yeah. Yeah. You have made it through to the head-to-head -head in both of the games you've played. You've done phenomenally well. Very, very unfortunate not yeah. to make it through to the final last time, I'd say, because you, you, you answered very, very well. You just happened to be beaten in the event. <laughs> Brilliant. Lovely contestants. Thanks so much for joining us. But for Rick and Shirley, it's time for our pointless final and the chance to win our jackpot of £2,500. <laughs> well, congratulations, Rick and Shirley. You've fought off all the competition and you have won our coveted pointless trophy. So very, very well done. <laughs> Now have a chance to win our pointless jackpot, and at the end of today's show, the jackpot stands at £2,500. <laughs>
Now, the rules are very simple. To win that money, all you have to do is find a pointless answer that no one else could think of. Now, we've had one pointless answer on the show today, and that was from you, Rick, with uh, Lamagaya in the first round. You only have to find one more now, and you will go home with that money. First, though, you've got to choose a category, and you can choose from these three options. They are... Politicians, Hollywood legends, pop divas. OK, well, there's two categories that I quite like. They're pop divas, very good for me, Shirley Bassey. Diana Ross, people like that. Hollywood legends, I'm brilliant with the women, but not so good with the, with the guys sort of thing. So... Uh, well, it's over to you, Rick, because I am absolutely rubbish on all Hollywood three categories. Hollywood legends. <laughs> Hollywood legends? Yep. What would you like the question to be? I mean, if you could pick a sort of area within Hollywood legends... Uh, like I said, I'm good on the women's side, so uh, like a Mae West movie <laughs> would be good for me, or something obscure on that side. Yeah, just I something... See. Okay. A classical Hollywood legend would be good. Very best of luck. Thank Let's you. find out what that question is. Here it comes. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many Cary Grant films as okay. they could. Yeah, we're looking for uh, any feature film made for cinema release for which Cary Grant received an acting credit. As always, uh, we're not accepting short films, TV films or documentaries or any uncredited appearances. So any Cary Grant movies. Very best of luck and very best of luck at home as well. OK, you now have up to one minute to come up with three answers. Right. All you need to win that £2,500 is for just one of those answers to be pointless. Your 60 seconds start now. OK. There's arsenic and old lace. That's a very well-known one. Right. The most obscure one that I can come out is... And, and she did him no wrong, which was a Mae West and Cary Grant movie. Right. Okay. I know that. And... Um, North by North, was it? Did North, North by North West, North by North West, which was an Alfred Hitchcock movie. Yeah, I think I can get the three. You've got three? Yes. Happy to stop the clock yeah. there. Okay, very good. We were looking for Cary Grant films. I now need your three answers. Okay, the first one, Arsenic and Old Lace. Arsenic and Old Lace. Which was quite popular. The second one, what did I say? North by Northwest. North which was by Alfred Northwest. Harold, uh, uh, um, Alfred Hitchcock. Hitchcock. Yeah, yeah. And then she did a. She, and then I've got a Mae West movie from the very early 30s that he appeared in, which was. And, and either he or she did him no wrong. And he, I think, and he didn't. And she didn't. Know, didn't she did him no wrong. And she did him no wrong. And she did him no wrong yeah. is, the word, is the word you're going for. Yeah. Okay, and she did him no wrong. Yeah. Those are your three answers. Yeah. Now then. Of those three, which do you think is your best shot at a pointless answer? The last one. And she did him no wrong. Yep. We'll put that third. Which do you think is your least likely? Arsenic and Old Lace. Yeah. We'll put those up on the board, and here they are. Arsenic and Old Lace, North by Northwest, and she did him no wrong. Mm. There they are. OK, we were looking for Cary Grant films. You said this was your least confident answer. You only have to find one pointless answer, remember, to win that £2,500 jackpot. OK, so let's see. How many people said arsenic and old lace? Well, this is your first answer, the one you said you had the least confidence in. Always good, these first answers, to test how much our 100 people know about Cary Grant films. Oh, down it goes to three. <laughs> three for your first answer. That's pretty good. Thank you. Yeah, it's all set, all set fair for the next two. This is brilliant. Unfortunately, obviously, that's not a pointless answer, but you no. knew it wasn't going to be pointless. Mm. You have two more chances to win today's jackpot. Now, £2,500, what would you do with that, Shirley? One thing I've always wanted was a nice Persian rug for my living room, so I don't know. That's a, one idea, but uh, might well go on something completely different, so, <laughs> if we got it. <laughs> Very good. How about you, Rick? Three bottles of my favourite EDTs. Oh, eau de toilettes. Yes. OK, very good. I'm addicted Three. to them. And they're quite expensive. Yeah. <laughs> the ones I like or your... OK. Right, well, we are looking for Cary Grant films. Let's hope nobody said your next answer. This has to be pointless for you to win okay. that jackpot. £2,500. Let's see. North by Northwest. There it is. Let's put it to the test. Is it right? If it is, how many people said it? North by Northwest. Well, there it is. It's right. You've got three with Arsenic and Old Lace. 
You had a bit more faith in this answer. Let's see how far it goes down. Into the teens. Oh, 13. 13. So we've gone the other way. 13. You only have one more chance to win today's jackpot. £2,500. There's just, and she did him no wrong, yep. standing between you and that jackpot. You said this was the answer you had the most faith I in. Are you so, confident yeah. now? Yeah, because I've seen the movie. The title might not be 100% and might be wrong, but uh, yeah, I can see the movie and I think I, I am right, yeah. Your faith in Rick is absolute on this, Shirley. Oh, yes. I wouldn't have been able to come up with any of those. I had seen Arsenic and Old Lace, but I'm not good on films, so it's very much relying on Rick. OK, well, let's find out. And she did him no wrong. Is that the right name for the film? And if it is, is it pointless? And she did him no wrong. How many people said it? Oh, oh no! <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, no. no. I'm, I was picturing a Persian rug and a <laughs> tiny bottle of very expensive aftershave <laughs> there. Unfortunately, you didn't manage to find that all-important pointless mm. answer, so I'm afraid you don't win today's jackpot of £2,500. But that will go over onto the next show. But you've been amazing contestants, and you do get to take home our pointless trophy, so... Thank you. Some consolation. <laughs> Richard. Uh, yeah, tough luck on And She Did Him No Wrong. There was a 1933 film with Mae West... Cary Grant, pointless answer, she done him wrong. Oh, well. <laughs> she done him wrong. Really, really bad luck. Mm. Let's take a look at some of the pointless answers. There's plenty up there. I suspect some people at home would have got a few of these. Uh, there's Alice in Wonderland. You played the mock turtle in that. An Affair to Remember with uh, Deborah Kerr. Father Goose set in World War II. Uh, His Girl Friday was a, was a pointless answer, amazingly. Indiscreet, My Favourite Wife, both pointless. Very well done if you've got any of these. Penny Serenade, he was nominated for a Best Actor Oscar for that. This Is The Night. Uh, and Walk, Don't Run, which was, uh, is one of his last films, set at the 1964 Olympics. Ah, <sighs> well now, did you know any of those answers? No. No. Oh, well, that's some, no. that's some consolation. Mm. she done him wrong. I remember that, yeah. But I really like, and she did him no wrong. It's much more poetic. Yeah. It sounded a lot and, nicer. Um, and better English, frankly. <laughs> so, uh, so there we are. Well, unfortunately, we do have to say goodbye to you, Rick and Shirley. Um, it's such a great shame. We only had you on once. No. It's just you were too good. You it's came straight been... through to the final. Otherwise, we'd have got you. We'd have had two bites of that, Jerry. But uh, there we are. It's been a great day, thanks. Uh -huh. Well, it's been, it's been lovely fun. having you on the show. Thank you so much for playing. Thank, Thank you. you. So nobody's won our jackpot today, which means it rolls over onto the next show when we will be playing for three thousand five hundred pounds.